Hello, Mum and Gran. So, I have not made an armour video in ages, and I thought I would like to show you what I have been working on. So, sorry for the, the zoom around. This, try and focus, there we go. This is my new anvil, and I made it out of, as you can see, a piece of railway sleeper. Now, the exciting thing about making it out of a railway sleeper is that this here is about an inch and a half wide and that is an awful lot of steel to cut through. Um, so I, I sort of had to cut the little angle up there and then you have to smooth it all off so it's a nice surface. You can see it's a little bit rusty, I need to give it another polish at some point. Um, but I've got this rather nice anvil and because railway sleepers are hardened steel because they're meant to be able to deal with the tracks running up and down them all the time um, or the, the train wheels they they actually make quite a good anvil it was it was recommended by some online stuff um, I have a second one you can see hiding down here Boing! and um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that one it was sort of a backup um, and I think I showed you my my girdle, which is over here. It's the, the one that goes around your belt um, that needed a lot of riveting. It was a nightmare. But as it turns out, I, uh, I've made some other bits of armor more recently. And ta-da! So, I haven't quite done it up completely. These are still a bit loose. I've just done one of them up. But, this piece of armour, sorry for the silly line in the middle, that's uh, it's just two different mirrors. Um, this is my breastplate. So, I've got um, plates that come up, sort of covering my tummy, and then the big breastplate on top, and some pads that go over the shoulders, and, oh, that's a bit silly, you can see down the back as well. So I'm kind of like a bug. Um, my sides, if we can focus. And again, I haven't done it up properly, so they're not quite overlapping properly. Might, might actually look better on this side. Let me just see. Uh, overlapping plates up here as well. So it goes into my armpit. And then, I'm not sure if I've done a chain mail. We can actually... Never mind the mirror, let's just have a look at the chain mail on my arm. Just trying to, trying to, struggling to focus. Oh, we nearly got there. Nearly a bit further back. Uh, okay. There's the chain mail going down my arms. Um, it's just aluminium chain mail, it's nothing particularly special. And you can see right at the ends I've got these tiny little ones that just sort of seal off the end well. Um, and it comes, I'm going to jump back to the mirror now. It comes running up my arm and then where it gets to this is like a leather tunic that goes underneath everything just gives a bit more padding so that when I get, when I get whumped with something it uh, it doesn't pass on all of the force um, but yes so it, it just connects up and uh, I will try and prop my phone up somewhere so that you can see the hilariousness that is me trying to take this off because it's, it's quite difficult it's a little bit heavy okay so this bit is kind of easy it just has bits that attach here so all I have to do is lift this one up and not tear my ears off because Great success. That's the breastplate. Now this bit is a pain in the butt. First thing to do, normally there'd be all three uh, belts done up. But I've only got one on each side. For the purposes of, for illustrative purposes. Okay. Now what I could do is I could just lift this off, but the problem is, as you can see with the chain mail, 
it actually goes all the way around my arm. My arm doesn't just sort of fall out of it. It's like trying to take a t-shirt off. But this is a t-shirt that doesn't stretch at all. Um, Chainmail does not stretch. That's why it has to be so very wide. Because when I bend my arm, and I'll come in closer, hopefully you can see. When I bend my arm, it all bunches up. And you can see it kind of lifts a little. And if your chain mail is too thin, or, or is, is too narrow, um, when you go to bunch your arm, it, it locks and you can't actually move your arm. And it's, it's metal. It's quite strong. So to get this off, I have to be a little bit special. Now, essentially, what I need to do is I need to take it off by the bits up the top now. And it is somewhat of a nightmare. plate has to be its own separate piece that goes over the top but I actually managed to get some decent sort of curvature out of it which is a tricky bit and I got decent curvature out of all these so that's good there's sort of a, a bit hard to see I'm gonna go upside down here come on focus there we go. So this is a piece of belt. It's quite thick leather with the steel on top, riveted on in some places. Not very well. Um, and then this piece is a thinner leather. It's, it's maybe like I don't know, one or two millimeters thick. Whereas this belting piece is probably four or five millimeters thick. The steel itself is 0.6, which is quite a lot thinner than like night medieval knight steel um, they would have used a much thicker steel um, but they probably wouldn't have had as bigger overlaps because like at, at that point there you have to get through two layers just to get into your, your squishy knight in the middle um, you can see that's the the backing of if I roll it over there's all of the, the steel plates and the leather and when you lift it up so that we can see how I have attached these sleeves. It's quite fiddly actually because one individual link, let's see if I can find. Okay, so it's a little bit hard to see, but each link is just butted up against the end of itself. So that spot there like thread can pull through so you can't use thin thin thread or string like like sewing thread even a, a strong sewing thread because at some point it'll just slip through and even this kind of th well it's not thread it's it's like a sinew a, a hard uh, a thick string um, it can work its way through as well and it just slowly makes it bigger so what I do instead is I put an eyelet into one of those circles so that, that ring right there, I put an eyelet through that bit. That's what one of these eyelets is. Um, and I, I punch that eyelet with this little, this is just a sort of a little thin crappy piece of leather. Um, and then I can sew through it as, a, as an extra strengthy kind of thing. Um, and so you get, you can see there, you can actually see the, the chain mail link, which is this one. That has the eyelet going through it. I haven't put string on that one because I didn't really need to. It wasn't attached to the, the heavier leather. Um, but yeah, I can still wave my arms around fairly well. Um, it's, it's reasonable. You can see a lot of riveting again. Riveting sucks. But with a lot of these rivets, it's hard to tell. You have to sort of see the colour. I'll try and get... Zoom back out a bit. You can see the color difference. I used copper rivets here, which means, and it was because I was just, I wasn't riveting steel to steel. 
if I'm doing, if I want to do something really strong, I use a stainless steel rivet. I have a stainless steel nail and I bash it. And that's what I did a lot with the with the uh, the waist thing. These bits, those are all steel rivets, much stronger. But you don't really need to be that strong because if it can tear a copper rivet, it can tear the leather. So having a stainless steel rivet won't make it any better. It'll just tear out of the leather either way. Um, there are some things that I would change about this. I'm not super enamoured of the, the overlapping, even though it, it sort of seems to work. Um, I don't know, I think it could be a little better fitted, but it's not too bad. Um, so I'm just continuing to work on bits of that occasionally. Just haven't been doing very much recently because I'm preparing for the GAMSAT and struggling through teaching. So yeah, that's my anvil. Focus. My anvil and my breastplate.